The fire occurs during the summer, in the middle of a heat wave with temperatures of around 30 degrees and relative humidity of approximately 40%. The origin is due to an accident in a far near the forest area. Extremely low fuel moisture conditions and after an extended drought period and rapid southwest winds of 20 km per hour, push the fire out of control in a matter of minutes. Several isolated country houses and other structures are going to be affected by the main fire front in a short time. People staying there need to follow the instructions provided by the emergency authorities. The Fixed Wings RPAS drone is the first component of the IOPS technology to be activated. Drone experts have set up an automated flight across the area affected and threatened by the fire with the aim to capture aerial imagery. These images will be assembled through fast mapping techniques to produce a high resolution scale ortho photo map. The use of this map will be used for the live tracking of the first responder in the field. And therefore, will be enabled to collaborate between operators at the control rooms and the operatives who will carry out search and rescue operations. The high-resolution ortho photo maps produced through fast mapping techniques with drones are ready for visualization on the PC. Drone experts of CAT UAV and SCADABOT explain how these images are sorted out and uploaded to the emergency management system owned by SARAI. Here now we can see the concept of operations of uh, these kind of setups. Here, what we are uh, proposing is to have a place of operation here located in letter A, as you can see here, from which the drone will be operated during the, the full mission. The drone then is uh, command, uh, either by long-range communications or 4G, 5G telemetry link, in order to perform either a pre-planet flight plan or even a Fly, a guided fly mode in which you click on the map, the place in which you need the drone to be located, and then the drone flies to that spot in order to either go over for imagery or even to act as a re repeater in order to uh, give communications to those areas that doesn't have uh, proper uh, coverture. So this allows us in this uh, rapid prototyping, uh, ra rapid mapping application, to perform this kind of uh, flight plans that you are seeing here, in which we cover different areas, one after the other. And we can uh, upload these maps on the go, so we don't need to have everything previously planned, but if we have any information or any feedback from teams that are in the ground, uh, we can do these flight plans from the uh, operation center, upload them in the plane, and then send the plane to execute them. So once we have the images, then we can process them. And here you will have a, uh, this table in which we can see the processing times for diff the different exercises that we have seen today. So we have the three areas, uh, called Suspina Town, the caves, and the center. You have here the approximate surface that we have covered. So this 50 hectares, 45 and 120. And here you can see the flight time to cover them, the initial processing, here are the first results that we are getting from those uh, the data. The time to generate the 3D model and the time to generate the maps depending on the resolution. So if we are working at uh, the higher resolution that we can work at, that is this four centimeter pixel with this drone setup, we will end up with these times. But if we don't need so much resolution because maybe our application doesn't need it, uh, we can get much shorter times. You can see here, for example, that we are going from one hour to just eight minutes. So depending on if we need high quality data or we need it to be as fast as possible, we have the capability 
to choose the best setup for each application. The workers of a company have found themselves trapped in the middle of the spreading fire and have to be warned about the need to leave the area through a viable escape route. Operators in the control room check the accesses to the premises on the orthophoto map and contact the closest first responders in the field, asking them to assist with the immediate evacuation of the workers of the company. The first responders who will perform the rescue operations arrive at the site and set up IOP's equipment before performing the operations. They put on the helmet that incorporates a wearable position device. Moreover, LTE 5G deployable communication system is activated, which will enable live tracking of their position indistinctly in indoors or outdoors environments. The position of the rescuers can be tracked with the emergency management system on the left-hand side of the screen. The rescuers head towards the premises of the company at risk. The rescuers get inside in order to warn all the workers about the need to evacuate the premises due to the approaching fire. Operators in the control room receive a second alert of a car crash. A vehicle trying to escape from the fire has gone out of control, plugging over a hillside in the forest. The location is very close to the current position. The rescuers can reach the victims by foot. For the multicopter part of the Opus at Scarabo Technologies, we have developed a camera payload and data link setup for our UAV systems based on the output of the analysis of user needs and assembling work package. The Opus payload provides three different cameras and a one watt spotlight. There is one first person view camera for pilot operations, one RGB 30 times optical zoom camera and a thermal camera with 680 to 512 pixels and 10 times digital zoom capability. Intended applications are aerial surveillance of the rescue teams as well as providing images for area map generation. Its key feature is that all camera streams as well as system control and telemetry are transmitted simultaneously with low latency to the ground station, which is able to distribute them in a local Wi-Fi network, making them available, for example, to the EOPIS emergency management system. Files for map generation can be transferred to the ground asynchronously and are available on a network share. The required data and control link security is ensured by AES-128 encryption and anti-jamming techniques on the radio link. The first implementation of the ground station is integrated in a rugged control handset that acts as a ground station. The handset provides system and payload control as well as a graphical user interface and ground station functionality. The pilot can also watch, select and configure any camera stream. In parallel, the streams and telemetry are forwarded by the ground station and distributed in the local Wi-Fi network. What you are watching right now are the redistributed streams on the ground network. These can be displayed on multiple stations or forwarded as needed. Right now, it seems we have some performance issues with the link of the handset. We're working to improve that. A future option here is also a more powerful ground station setup, as the fully handheld version of course has limitations.
So this was a very good first test of our Yopus payload under real operation conditions. We're looking forward to building on that and to the second test in autumn. The rescuers ran across the forest to search and assist the victims of the car accident. An intense web advention brings sudden and intense rainfall across the region of El Moyanes in Catalonia, this being favorable to thunderstorm activity. Copious rainfalls up to 100 mm in three hours occurs in the area. The rapid rainfall activity culminates in the overflow of the Torrent Mal stream on its course by the natural caves Coves del Toy, resulting in a severe flood event that collapses the area. The flow of the stream rises to 120 cubic meters per second, leaving some people trapped on the other side of the river without any chances to return to the main road. The fixed-wing RPAS drone is activated. Drone technicians set up an automated flight over the area of the cave's Coves del Toy to capture aerial imagery. The resulting images will be treated with fast mapping techniques to produce the high-resolution scale or to photomap. The use of this map will be used for the live tracking of the first responders in the field and therefore will enable collaboration between operators at the control room and the operative dispatch to the area in the caves who will perform the operations to rescue the people trapped on the other side of the stream bank. The high resolution orthophoto maps produced through fast mapping techniques with drones are ready for visualization on the emergency management system. Communication experts of Athonet explain the communication systems that will enable live tracking of their position. In the actual site, one of the helmets will rely on Athonet's communications and the other one on available commercial ones. So the firefighters are equipped here with a rucksack, which contains all the equipment you needed to make uh, uh, mobile communications locally. So easy to bring, to take, to deploy, because you just need to open the rucksack, mount the antennas in order to grant the radio coverage uh, in the area where you need to communicate for critical communications. This is a very simple operation you need uh, to do and afterwards you just press the button and the system goes live. Operations in the control room receive several alerts of people who are visiting the caves Coves del Toy and now find themselves caught on the other side of the flooded stream. Also, they are alerted that some people are inside the caves and are scared to get out by themselves. Operators check the accesses to the premises on the map and contact the closest first responders in the field, asking them to get to the area. Follow the walk path that leads to the caves and enter the caves to search and rescue the people who are trapped inside. The first responders arrive at the stream bank to proceed with the rescue operations. They put, they put on the helmet that incorporates a wearable positioning device. This is aligned with the activation of the LTE 
5G deployable communication system that will enable live tracking of their positions, both inside and outside the caves. Their position can be tracked with the emergency management system on the left-hand side of the screen. The two rescuers run towards the river, cross the fort, and then continue to head towards the caves of El Toy, where some people are trapped. The IOP's positioning helmet aims to provide continuously seamless outdoor and indoor positioning of the emergency rescue team. The helmet prototype is composed by a GNSS receiver and a stereo camera which also includes an IMU and a processing unit. All these components are powered by a low-profile power bank. The built-in camera tracking algorithm combines data from the IMU and from the stereo fish-eye cameras. This is to provide, by means of visual inertia odometry, a seamless indoor-outdoor solution. The data fusion algorithm running in the processing unit combines the GNSS positioning with the camera-based tracking and remains the heart of the system. When good GNSS conditions are available, the algorithm gives priority to the GNSS solution, while switching to the camera-based tracking once the GNSS conditions start to get worse. The rescuers locate and assist the first victim. The victim has been moved to a safe place and is already receiving medical assistance. However, the rescues need to proceed with the rescue operations in the caves. Two people are trapped at the end of the narrow passage of this 120 meters long cave. They are scared and don't dare to get out by themselves.
truck carrying chlorine gas has driven off-road and overturned because of a collision with a car as it passed near the village of Coisuspina. The occupants of both vehicles sustained minor injuries. However, toxic chlorine gases contained in the tanker of the truck are released into the air. Unfortunately, the resultant irritant gas cloud spreads downwind towards the village of Coyuxuspina. Skin contact with toxic chlorine gases causes dizziness, nausea, and breathing difficulties, while the gas concentration of over 1,000 parts per million can result in immediate death. Emergency authorities establish a safety distance within a radius of 300 meters around the crash track. However, they extend the safety distance up to three times downwind. Coisuspina falls inside that distance under four warning sirens and triggered to issue an evacuation of all the residents. Drones take off, fly as far as the perimeter of Coisuspina and film the surroundings of the village. Due to recent changes in the European normative on the rules and procedures for the operation of unmanned aircraft, permissions to allow drones fly over the urban areas could not be applied for until February 2021, which did not allow us enough time to process them usually takes over six months. For this reason, the ortho photo map was made for oblique images of the area taken from outside the perimeter of the village. The high resolution ortho photo maps produced through fast mapping techniques with drones are ready for visualization on the emergency management system. Technical experts of Sarai explain how these images are embedded into the emergency management system and how they will be used for indoor outdoor tracking purposes. The Sarai Emergency Management System is an all-in-one cloud-based software solution for incident and emergency management. Sarai's approach is combining day-to-day -day project management and daily operations with crisis management preparedness and asset monitoring, assuring smooth transition from managing small incidents up to national calamities. The Sarai Emergency Management System has been used as the main data consolidator and aggregator for the IOP's project. Users and devices are registered to the Emergency Management System where the two can be linked together. The Emergency Management System receives the location data of the devices, wearable portable devices on Airbus, and stores them in a database and are displayed live on Sarai's Map Viewer. The Map Viewer can additionally receive and display multiple sources and base layers and overlays, such as the flight path or the Airbus device and the generated orthophoto maps. The Sarai Emergency Management System is split into a front-end and a back-end, the front-end being the part that the user interacts with directly, sometimes referred to as the client side. The back-end, sometimes referred to as the server side, is the part of the application that deals with logic and data. The back-end parses incoming data from the front-end and stores it into the database. It also deals with requests from data from the front end and responds with data fetch from querying the database. Splitting the application into two very well-defined roles allows for validation of incoming data and ensures that no data be served to unauthorized users. Sarai has developed an API interface to be used by external parties such as IOPs. This API interface has been developed as a REST API service. 
It used a secure but simple and non-intrusive in authentication method, similar to basic authentication with permission scopes that are defined into the SARI's emergency management system. This API allows to exchange data between other components of the system, such as the wearable positioning device or ERPAS with the SARI's emergency management system. The system provides users with access to the generated maps via URL and the maps are viewable using SARI's integrated map viewer. Operators ordered the immediate dispatch of a rescue team to assist with the evacuation procedures of Coisuspina. They identified on the map a car park in the center of the village that can be a good meeting point for the operative and a starting point for rescue operations. An evacuation plan is established that involves special procedures to reach the most vulnerable population in the first place. The rescuers will have reached two disabled people who require assistance to be evacuated off site. Once the rescuers arrive at the car park, they set up the IOPIS equipment. They will be wearing the helmet that incorporates a wearable positioning device. The position of the rescuers can be tracked with the emergency management system on the left-hand side of the screen. The two rescues head towards the building where the disabled people are. The people are on the second floor of the building. 